Open Turning Point 2008. PowerPoint will open and Turning Point will have its own tab up at the top, right here. The first slide is already done for you. This is for the quiz's title. So just as you would a regular PowerPoint, you could just add, um, click here to add a title. I'm just going to call it Zoology Quiz. Okay, so this is your title. You can choose whether to add a subtitle or not. I'm not going to add a subtitle. The next step is to insert the slide. Now, you're not going to go insert slide like you normally would do in PowerPoint. You're going to make sure you're on the turning point tab, and you're going to go insert slide right here. Here you have multiple options for creating your questions. The ones I'm going to look at are in this section right here. Yes, no, true, false, linkert slides, generic slides, and icebreaker slides. Yes, no slides give you, you know, the, an option for a yes, no question. I'm going to go ahead and create another slide. Yes, no, and abstain is the same thing as the yes, no, just that you have an option to not answer. True, false is self-explanatory. Now, Linkert slides is something where you can ask a question about an opinion, and the students would have to pick if they um, strongly agree or strongly disagree. Add another slide here. Generic slides are what you're probably going to be using. These are where you could do your multiple choice questions. So, for example, if I pick for answer, you ask the question up here, and here you can put your answers. These are the ones you're most likely going to be using. The last ones I want to show you are the icebreaker slides. Icebreaker slides are already done for you within Turning Point. Um, there are two options, analogy and word scramble. Now these icebreaker slides can be used before the actual quiz in order to show students how the clickers work. Turning Point, is, as you can see, generates the answers for you already. So these are a neat little set of slides you can just use at the beginning just as the students get accustomed to using the clickers. Okay, so I'm just going to delete these and start from the beginning. And I'm going to add a multiple choice slide. So you go up here, you're going to go to insert, I'm going to go to generic slides, and I'm going to pick for answer. Okay, here I'm going to ask a question. I'm just going to ask which animal has stripes? Whoops. And here I'm going to put the answers. Okay. Once you're done entering your choices, you're going to go right over here to the right, and now you're going to have to indicate which is the correct answer. So here under answer values, I'm going to pick four as the correct answer. So click on the drop down uh, arrow and just hit correct. And as you can see, the other answers automatically default to incorrect. Okay, so to go to the next slide, you're going to do the same thing. Just go to insert. Um, let me just pick uh, true false this time. Okay, so my question is going to be zebras have stripes. And it's going to be true and false. I'm going to go over to the right and pick number one as the correct answer. Okay, so let's just leave these two questions and let's say we're done. Just like you can with a regular PowerPoint, 
you can change the font color and font size and font style of your text. You would just highlight you know, the text. And now at this point you can go to the regular home tab and just make your changes like you normally would in you know, regular PowerPoint. So I'm just going to go like that. I'm going to change the color of this. Okay. You could change the background color as well. To change the background color, you do it the same way as you normally do in PowerPoint. Um, you would right click the background and go to Format Background. Um, let's pick a gradient and let's make it, I don't know, this orange color. And just hit Apply to All, Close. Okay. Before you actually start polling, there's a couple of choices you'll have to make. The first is whether you want the answer graph to show on the slide after the students have answered. The second thing would be if you want a check mark or some kind of indication to appear next to the correct answer after the students have answered. Okay, as far as the answer graph showing, if you don't want the answer graph to show, after each response. What you'll have to do is go up to Tools, go to Settings, and you'll have to do this for every question. So right now I'm on the first question, which animal has stripes. You're going to go to Chart Settings. Here where it says Review Only, if you do not want the answer graph to show, you're going to change this to true. If you want the answer graph to show, change it to false. The default should be set on, on false. And remember, you'll have to do this for each question. Just keep in mind, if you pick true, meaning that the answer graph does not show, you will still be able to access that information once you save the session. Your students just won't see the chart displayed. I'm going to go ahead and just leave this to set at false. When you're done, just click done. The next thing you will have to decide is whether you want the correct answer to be indicated after students respond. Again, this will have to be set for each slide. Okay, so let me just stay on this slide here. And if I want the correct answer to show after the student's answer, you're going to go to Insert Object. Go down to where it says Correct Answer Indicator. And you have a few choices here that you can use. I'm just going to pick the check mark. So after this, all the students enter their answers, a check mark is going to appear on the correct answer. I'm going to do that to the next slide as well. So I'm clicking on the next slide. I'm going to insert object, correct answer indicator, and I'm going to choose the check mark. Once you're done, don't forget to save your project. So you're going to go to File and Save. Browse to where you want to save your presentation. The default will be the name on the first title slide, but you can make it anything you want and then go ahead and hit save.